This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Holidays are here. Be sure to get your special one some great, great coffee over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, where they have high quality coffee beans directly imported from far off lands such as Indonesia, Brazil, Honduras, Colombia, and much, much more. Come in K-Cups as well, gift cards available, and free shipping over $50. So be sure to hit up ironbeancoffee.com to sh- check out all of the products that they have to offer. Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? Kyle, what I tell you? Check the live chat. What I tell you? Buckeye Zach, not happy. <laughs> yeah his the boy blue. just answered the er, just entered the transfer portal and no i'm not talking about uh i'm not talking about either of the people who you think i might be talking about hey hey Stuart, Stuart, be nice Stuart. <laughs> all right jared let's let's hop right into it We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, all things considered, Jared. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll steal your answer. I'll steal your answer. Um, <laughs> definitely before... been a. It was definitely a rough week for Buckeye fans. Definitely a rough week, and didn't really seem to get much better. Yep, the we had the one shining light that was last week, and that was Ohio State beating Duke, number one Duke, in basketball. Uh, so, just rule of thumb, no number one team should be be playing Ohio State because more often than not, they're going to lose. All right, let's, let's put that <laughs> on a T-shirt, I guess. Uh, before we get hey. too deep into things, um, kind of have a, a small piece of news, maybe a big piece of news. Um, not official until January 1st. Uh, but we, we're, we're going to be leaving the Buckeye scoop. Uh, we just wanted to go independent, just sort of, uh, you know, it's, it, there's, there, there's no big news item here. Like still cool with Tony, still cool with Tom, still cool with everyone who you've seen on this show, uh, who we've had guest starred on the show. It's, it's, it's not, it's not anything personal to the people over there who we like, um, you know, and, yeah, we're we're leaving on good terms as far as I'm concerned, and as far as everyone uh, I've talked to is concerned. So, um, if if you watch this on the Buckeye Scoop, um, if that's where you're watching this, like on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, at the end of the show, there there will be a uh, a title card, a end card to follow us. If you want to keep watching us, we have we already have our own YouTube channel where we've been posting. We don't get too many views over there because everyone watches us on Buckeye Scoop on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. So you might want to jump over there uh, if you want to continue watching us, or if you don't want to continue watching us, that's fine too. I'm not the boss of you. You you can do whatever you want. Um, and that that's it. Uh, that's that's all I have to say about that. Um. Kyle, man, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, where, where do you want to go? Well, let's let's start with let's start with the bad news here. Bad news. I, I just could Which bad news? Bad news. <laughs> we we got two Buckeyes, um, well three, if you're counting um, Zach's uh, favorite uh, quarterback as well, uh, <laughs> uh, Craig Young and Quinn Ewers are officially um, entered the transfer portal. Definitely a lot of people were really confused about the whole Quinn Ewers joining early and then, and then transferring out. Um, I won't go too deep into that and everybody has their opinions about it, but best of luck to him wherever he goes. Yeah. um, I have lots of thoughts on it, but I'm going to keep them to myself for now. Um, everyone's got to do what's best for them. Um, I'll, I'll say this, uh, someone who knows what they are talking about 
told me that when when Quinn Ewers reclassified, his chances of ever playing meaningful snaps for Ohio State dwindled. Uh, C.J. Stroud had an amazing year. Uh, we don't know what's happening with the Heisman stuff yet. I don't expect C.J. Stroud to win the Heisman, but I think there's a real decent chance he gets an invite to New York. And no matter what anyone is was trying to tell you, there was not going to be a quarterback battle uh, for for this offseason. The 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 quarterback job belonged, belonged, belongs to C.J. Stroud, and. Quinn Ewers sees himself as a three and done guy and he doesn't want to only play one year. So he's going to go find an opportunity elsewhere and, and more power to him. Um, had he stayed in the class of 2022, then he could have sat for one year, potentially played for two, uh, depending upon if CJ Stroud leaves early, depending upon if he could have beaten out Kyle McCord, depending upon, depending upon, depending upon, um, Ultimately, he has to do what's best for him. But the second he reclassified, I, I think the writing was on the wall. I I had you know people saying, well, what if this happens and what if that happened? I'm like, and, you know, people are always saying, well, McCord's definitely going to transfer. And I'm like, if mm, Quinn Ewers might transfer first, you know what I mean? Like I, I've kind of for, like from the second the reclassification happened, it was I think writing was on the wall that this was yep. not a certainty, but more likely than not. Yep. And the other Craig Young, too, here's a guy three years at Ohio State, hasn't really made a huge impact, might might have next year, but I I, I think I think this one hurt more than the Quinn Ewers uh, transferring because you, you had another linebacker who was able to get meaningful snaps, not starting, but meaningful um, snaps get in there, get some, um, get some legs fresh on the field there. So I, I'm a little surprised about Craig Young, especially I think he started seeing the ball more or seeing the field more a little bit towards the end of the year, but you got to do what you got to do, I guess. Yeah. And he's an Ohio kid. So that, that stinks. And um, I don't know. It's, I don't know how often you see a guy go to the transfer portal and then not. Um, I have to. Th what I don't want for Craig Young is for Craig Young to leave for Ohio State to make defensive coaching changes that could have benefited him and then him not being able to benefit from from those changes because he was gone. Uh, I do think I do think a lot of changes are coming to the defensive coaching staff. Uh, those aren't going to happen soon, but I fully believe that they will happen. I think in many ways, Ryan day is going to wait for the defensive coaching carousel to turn a few times, see who comes available, especially from the NFL side. I think that's where he probably has his eye for the next, maybe the next defensive coordinator uh, and maybe a few other positions, but uh, it's, it is what it is. I, I, you know, once again, I, I have nothing but the best of hope for Craig Young. I hope this works out for him. Um, I'm, you know, I'm incredibly happy for Jamison Williams. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. incredibly, I was incredibly happy for Joe Burrow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for the, I'm, you know, once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye. I will stand by that. And it was one of the reasons why I'm 100% adopting Cincinnati for this playoff run because Luke Fickle is once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye in my mind. So, yep. In the in the early, the early thoughts about Quinn Ewers, going back to Quinn Ewers here, looking like the best place he's going to right now, probably either Texas or Texas Tech. Texas Tech, I don't know. I feel like I'd rather start one year at Ohio State than start two years at Texas Tech. And before anyone says Patrick Mahomes to me, I know. But exception versus rule, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. who's your Buckeye says Oklahoma? Well, I mean, maybe if you mean things USC? hadn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. All right. By the way, 
I'm just throwing this out there. I don't I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. But highly touted USC. Uh, I believe he was a freshman this year. Uh, being candid about potentially looking at the transfer portal. Uh, just saying Ohio State might be looking to fill some depth, looking for potential guys. That's a, that's a guy who's out there. Mm-hmm. Quarterback. Yeah. Quarterback, right. Stuart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think we mentioned it the previous episode, Jared. Uh, Ohio State did get a commit. Did we mention that in the yeah, yeah, previous yeah, yeah. episode? Yeah, the guy they okay. flipped from USC. We yeah, we mentioned absolutely yeah. mentioned okay. that on the last episode. All right, never mind. All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and move forward now. All right, the regular season is done, Jared. The regular season's done. The final rankings are out, and Ohio State finished sixth in the in the final playoff rankings. Which I, by th- the, I think I, I think that I think that's about right. I think that's yeah. where they should be. They're actually the best two loss team ranked right now and they're just behind Notre Dame and then Cincinnati would be facing Alabama and one of the semis and the other semis the is Georgia and Michigan while Ohio State will be going on over to Pasadena to take on the Utes of Utah Any yeah thoughts on uh, that, Jared? I think Ohio State plays well I mean I I don't I'm not worried about Utah per se I I, I you know, maybe try and get some of that honor back from the big or from the uh, Pac-12. Um, I, Utah's a good team, but I, I I don't see them as being in the same league as Ohio State. Yeah, early early favorites have Ohio State opening up at seven and a half points. Right, which for for what it's worth was uh, what 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 Ohio State was favored over Michigan. So yeah. Just just throwing okay. that out there. Um, quick coaching uh, stuff. Venables, defensive coordinator from Clemson, rumored to be heading to Oklahoma. And the Mario Cristobal coach from Oregon, uh, rumored to be heading to Miami. These are all rumors. The uh, Cristobal to Miami a- appears to be in the early rumor stage, like that's that one's even less further along. The Venables ones uh, feels like it's it's a thing that's going to happen. It's a, that's a tough blow for Clemson. Uh, that's a very tough blow for Clemson. Um, it's and we'll see how it goes for Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, he's you know he's a great defensive coordinator. Does that translate to being a great coach? We'll see. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so, conference conference championship games here. So mentioned we mentioned Ohio State and Utah playing the Rose Bowl. So let's start let's start with that Utah for the second time this year, just just dominating yeah. Oregon here. They won thirty eight to ten here, and it was just not even close. I think it was like it was over twenty. It was like twenty three nothing at halftime. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. Uh, Oregon was never in this game. Flat, I, yeah. and you know, may, maybe the Cristobal rumors, maybe the back room dealings of him potentially talking to Miami. Uh, but then again, Utah killed them, as Kyle pointed out, once already this season. Without that, you know, when when Oregon still had stuff to play for, Oregon still potentially a playoff team when you talk you know crush them mm-hmm. you know yeah. so the the excuse any excuses about Cristobal being distracted or whatever doesn't really hold water then um but Oregon seemed completely disinterested in playing in this game for what it's they they didn't want to be there yeah yeah speaking of someone who didn't want to be there <laughs> Iowa <laughs> Iowa looked like a team that didn't deserve to be there just just Completely dominated all game here. 42 to 3 is the final score. It was a little bit closer, but Michigan just kept 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 on marching down, scored 21 yeah. points in the fourth quarter, but Iowa wasn't scoring points. There was no no way Iowa was going to get in here. They had to keep Michigan under 20 points to win this game. Even even then, they only scored three points. 
Yeah, and, and Michigan definitely threw some points on at the end there. Uh, going into the fourth quarter, it was 21-3, to three, which was... It was still over at that point because Iowa is it without a bunch of turnovers, without a bunch of gifts from Michigan. Iowa wasn't about to launch a 21 point or I guess a 17 point rally at the end of the game to come back and and win it. They just weren't. Mm -hmm. That's not who Iowa is. But but Michigan didn't even give them the opportunity by scoring 21 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Right, we, so um, we we did a social screen for this game, Kyle, um, and and we turned it off. That's <laughs> we did. <laughs> we were drinking. We were drinking bourbon and and turned it off. That's that's how that social screen went. All right. Uh, other games here. Cincinnati taking care of business over Houston, thirty-five to twenty. It was a very entertaining game. Halftime was fourteen thirteen. Houston was right in it, but then Cincinnati just. They always seem to have this one quarter where they just just take it away, and that was in the third quarter, scoring scoring twenty one unanswered points, never looked back, winning thirty five to twenty, and now are the first team from a non power five group making it to the playoffs, and rightfully so. Right, uh, Stewart and Hoosier, we have an ask Sloopcast for th- what you were talking about, so we will get there. Uh, yeah, uh, Cincinnati, I think much like, much like the trestle ball that they are, uh, in lineage, uh, in lineage of, in lineage from, I'm not sure what prepositional phrase to use there, but the, uh, where (laughs) from, from the Jim Trestle bloodline, how about that? The, from the Jim Trestle bloodline, uh, you know, don't not, not, not fast starters. Typically they sort of let the team hang around for a while. And then like, like Kyle said, end up pulling away and making it, uh, you know, ending it at some point in the game, but typically not a team that's going to have things wrapped up by the end of the first half. Yep. Uh, but as far as, yeah, but you know, Cincinnati, as Kyle said, uh, makes the historic move of being the first group of five team to make the playoffs. Uh, they will face Alabama, which is no small, no small feat. Um, I would have much rather they, they were, that they got to be third place and got to play Michigan. That would have been, that would have been pretty fun for me personally. I would have enjoyed that game. Honestly, that, that, honestly, that's what it really should have been. Georgia lost by 17 points. Yeah. In, the, in their conference championship game, and then you had, then you had Cincinnati, you had Cincinnati who was undefeated, and took care of their business, beat, beat Notre Dame, at their place, which is better than any win Georgia has, better than any win Georgia has. This is all. This is all, because the playoff committee doesn't want. Alabama, Georgia in the in the semifinals. That's all this was. It, I don't I don't understand why you couldn't put Cincinnati ahead of Georgia. Well, they'll they'll say that the overall strength of schedule and yada yada yada. But the SEC East was garbage this year because let's who who was we Kyle? I feel like we ask this every episode. Who was who was Georgia's best win? It is Clemson. No, it wasn't. I I'm sorry. No, it, I mean. Clemson, especially Clemson in September, couldn't score on you, me, and a couple crickets we pulled out of the yard. They they couldn't have scored on us. I know. So outside of that, who's their best win? Kentucky? Are you seriously gonna tell me it's Kentucky? Because Kyle, it's Kentucky. I, I broke I broke my microphone stand, cut Kyle. Yeah, that's up. It's them. I don't want to spend too much time, but yeah, it, it should have been Alabama and Georgia should have been a, they should have played each other again for the semifinals and then Michigan and Cincinnati for the other semis too. That's how it should have been. But, and they, the, the I committee mean, swears everybody else knew that's not what was going to happen that because the committee wouldn't have repeat um, conference championship games in the first semifinal game. Never and they, sw- they swear up and down that they don't consider that. I 
I don't believe them. You don't believe them, Kyle. You, the listeners, I'm sure. How many of you actually believe them? Wait I don't minute. know. I don't, but... I, don't be- I don't believe you, Gif, for me, Jared. Yeah. I I don't believe them. Um, yeah. All right. And why then, you and all, the Kyle, if, Kyle, if we're talking gifts here, it's why you always lying. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. All right. And the final two, final two here, Baylor upsets Oklahoma State for their chance to, to possibly get into the playoffs here. 21 to 16. Now, Jared, what if Oklahoma State won that game? Yeah. Could they have passed Man. Cincinnati? Man. I think it's a good question. And for the sake of Luke Fickle, I'm glad we don't we don't know. I because mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I know what I would have done. I know what I, I would have done. I would have put Cincinnati in. I would have put Cincinnati in as well as Oklahoma State. Well, now you're dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the and then the other game that no one really cared cared about Pittsburgh beating Wake Forest 45 for the record, 21 for the record Kyle I would have still put Georgia at four okay I it's Oklahoma uh, uh, I don't know maybe not maybe not Oklahoma State still would have been a one loss team you got conference championship they always conference value champion. conference championships over over other teams well but Ohio State it, Ohio State still got placed higher than Baylor so yeah there's that too <laughs> I think this is a good good um, time for an ad break, Jude. So sure, tell sure. us a little bit about s- some of the great coffee products that you can get over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Sure thing. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the non-flavored coffees. Let's talk about some standard coffees over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, there is the Fierce, which is a dark roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans. The Rage Against the Dying of the Light uh, has notes of cherry, milk, chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. The Rider Dies a Medium Roast Coffee, a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup uh, made from Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee beans. Uh, the Cast Iron, which is a medium roast coffee made with 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. The Odin, uh, which is a coffee that will keep you fighting long after, after you should have gone to Valhalla. There's the Rocco. The Rocco available in both medium and dark. Uh, it is an Ethiopian natural. Uh, the Thor, uh, which is uh, somewhere in between a medium and a dark roast. It's it's somewhere in between those two. The Loki, which is a medium light roast. It's 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 a little darker than a medium or a little darker than a light roast. A little lighter than a medium roast. It's it's a fun little tweener. Um, it's Kyle. I really didn't think I liked light roast coffees until I had the, until I had the Loki it's, and by the way, you're thinking, Oh, well, it's a light roast. It doesn't have much caffeine. You're wrong. It has plenty of caffeine. Don't you worry about that. The drink from the skull of your enemy. It's a traditional Indonesian coffee. Uh, it's edgy, smoky. Uh, it has notes of cedar and sweet tobacco, wine and spice. The fear, no evil. This, the, you think to yourself, Oh, well, I like a dark roast coffee. Have you ever had a black roast coffee? This is this is black beyond black. This or this is dark beyond dark. This is a black roast coffee. It doesn't get any. It doesn't get any darker. It's a it's a black roast coffee. Uh, the fear no evil um, is what I just talked about already. The integrity, which is the flagship coffee of the Iron Bean Coffee Company, uh, makes a great espresso. Uh, and like I said, is the flagship roast. Kyle, I, I just threw a bunch of coffee at everyone. Holidays are coming. Buy your favorite coffee drinker, their new favorite coffee, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Breathe out. Okay. Whew. Kyle, I feel like I did that. I didn't do that in one breath, but I, I really I really went for that one. Uh All right, Kyle, what's next? Uh, We have Pittsburgh Wake Forest. This one didn't really play into the uh, into the playoff picture too much or at all, actually. Uh, But Pittsburgh uh, let Wake Forest hang around for a while, but then eventually pulls away. Kyle, I'm letting you know right now, and this is an unpopular opinion, potentially. Kenny Pickett's my Heisman. Won't get it. No, 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 no. Because he doesn't play for a playoff team, which is absurd. Why is that a criteria? Once every 20 years. Yeah. It, when when was the last time that a... And by the way, we're talking Lamar. about an 11-2 team 
This team is not bad, but when was the last time that a team that wasn't in the, at least in the national championship picture, won the Lamar. Heisman? Yeah, Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson was just clearly the best player in college football that year. He just yeah. clearly was. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, let's look at uh, some just early, early um, bowl previews here. All right. You know, I, I don't know how early it is, but. Um, the, well, let's see the first. Well, the first game here is in. Uh, Kyle, do we do our? Do we do our? Do we do our give a? Do we do our give a fuck right rankings? Do we save oh, that 30. for a future? Um, we can do that next Sunday. We'll do that next Sunday or Wednesday. We'll, we'll do that. So, we'll, so the, we'll do... the first bowl games, first bowl games are on the seventeenth, which is next the following Friday here. So maybe we can do that. Maybe we can do that next week. Uh, uh, so, but real quick, Stewart asks. Stewart asks a really good question. What does moving the, what does moving to the Big Twelve do for Cincinnati since they've now made the playoffs? I don't know. I, I honestly like schedule. that. That move doesn't come for another three years. Strength of schedule. M maybe, maybe Kyle. That that doesn't happen for another three years. How confident are you that the Big 12 is still a conference Together. in three, in five years? I mean, let's, let's, let's make it five years, that the Big 12 is even still a thing in five years. I'm not super confident. Mm -hmm. Or that we're still, or that we're still even considering them a power five at that point are we just talking about a power four between now and five years from now i think it's entirely possible was georgia's schedule strong yes in that the average that they played is still better than the average team that cincinnati played if cincinnati's best bet cincinnati had the best win between those two teams but still, even bad SEC East teams are better than your average than than your average um, American conference team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Jared. Let's so, so just the week to week up. strength was stronger for Georgia. Um, it, it is, yeah. Some of these bowl games, Jared. Any any ones that stick out to you that you'd be interest interested in, in watching here? Um, scrolling down through, uh, Army West Point versus the Missouri Tigers. That might be worth watching. Uh, here, here's, here's one that I do find interesting outside of Cincinnati, Kyle, two of the teams from the group of five that we are paying maybe the closest attention to was San Diego state and the university of Texas, San Antonio. They will be playing each other in the Frisco bowl. That's potentially an inter interesting game. Um, How about the Gasparilla Bowl, where you got two Florida teams going at it. Yeah, it would have been fun if the if UCF was still the UCF that they were a few years ago. Then they would have slaughtered Florida, but um, mm -hmm. hell, they still might win. Yeah. In all honesty, they still might win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some more interesting games. I'm just looking down through here. I think Minnesota has a favorable matchup against West Virginia in the guaranteed rate bowl. <laughs> the guaranteed rate bowl. God, that's terrible. Um, the... Holiday bowl should be interesting. Yeah. You, you had high expectations from UCLA early on, and then you have NC state who has had a, a solid year. They finished nine and three. Um, beat Clemson this year and some other um, victories as well, too. I, I think this could be a, a close game there, too. Uh, Houston and Auburn should be interesting. Houston uh, I've had a very solid year. I think they could be a very dangerous team that they, Kyle, they're, could upset they're, Auburn here. They're, they're about to put what I said to the test. I literally just said a bad SEC team is still better than your average <laughs> AAC team. So I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, another Big Ten team, the Pinstripe Bowl, Maryland and Virginia Tech. So another former ACC matchup there. Oh, this is sad. This is sad, Kyle. Oregon versus Oklahoma. 
the so you just lost your head coach bowl yep that <laughs> that's <yes>. sad <laughs> that's real real sad uh peach bowl is interesting pittsburgh michigan that, that, state the, we did better we did better than expected bowl yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that that the overachievers bowl the peach bowl the peach bowl brought to you by overachievers.com which may or may not be a website please don't go to it i have no idea what you're going to find there um the, the Las Vegas Bowl seems like a a Rose Bowl Junior bowl game where you got a Big Ten and a Pac-12 team going at it. That's Wisconsin and Arizona State. <laughs> Stewart says the Growers, not Showers Bowl. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, you, know what I, you know what I'm not seeing a ton of? I'm not seeing a ton. We, there was a point in time in which uh, no, you scroll down, you start to get some more. You start to get some more. I was wondering where, like, all of the Big Ten versus SEC games yep. were. Um, yep. But if you scroll down a little bit further, the Music City Bowl has Purdue against Tennessee. Um, Old bully makers. Yeah. Um, you, have, you, of course, have Georgia versus Michigan. That goes without saying. Um, you get Iowa versus Kentucky, uh, which... I, you know, get together with your family, have a New Year's Eve, like big breakfast or excuse me, like lunch dinner, like you eat early then you throw this game on, you fall asleep. You know, maybe you spent maybe you spent all night out on Christmas Eve. You need a you need a mid afternoon nap Throw Iowa versus Kentucky on first one to first one to 20 wins. Oh, for if Iowa wants to win. Sure. Uh, you have Penn State versus Arkansas, a team that shouldn't be ranked, but somehow is versus a team that could have been ranked, but somehow isn't. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, then, I don't know, Kyle. Notre, Dame, it's, Notre Dame and Oklahoma State will be interesting. Now that, now that Freeman's in, um, taking home at Notre Dame here, this will be his first head coach uh, game here. I think that'll be interesting as the following game that Notre Dame will be playing. Yeah. Is against Ohio state. So yes, sir. definitely, definitely keep a close eye on that one for um, Buckeye fans. And I think that's it outside of Ohio state playing Utah and Rose bowl 5. PM talked about Cincinnati Bama and the cotton bowl. Uh, those are really all the interesting ones. Um, other high ranked teams here Baylor playing Ole Miss. Kyle, what? let's get to our Ask Loopcast questions. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right. All right. First up here, we have from Dinger Is it time to drop the early signing date for football recruitment considering the damage being done in an effort to get a team's new coach Kyle. seated before losing a class? I think we answered this one on our we on did. our previous episode. We did. I apologize for that. Uh, uh, let's see. I uh, I think Kabuto might be the first one where yes, that we're is poised yep, to answer. That is. that is yep. Kabuto's question uh, is, uh, of course, I just said that, then I lost it. Oh here, uh, oh because you Colorado deleted it and moved it, you bastard! Quit, quit editing <laughs> the notes. Since Colorado State fired Steve. Uh, Adizio, uh, I know I mispronounced that. Get over it. Do you think Ohio State <laughs> loses Tony Alford this offseason? Um, I think it's certainly possible. Um, I think that would be a great opportunity for Tony Alford, and I would be very happy for him. I mean, to go from a running back coach to a head coach position uh, at a place like Colorado State, which is – you know, a, a pretty respectable power f or excuse me, a group of five team. I think that'd be a great move for him and I'd be very happy for him. And Ohio state's done a really good job developing running backs over the years. So he would be missed for sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, absolutely. He would, but I, but you know, I'd be happy for him. Mm -hmm. All right. Stewart asks us, should the big 10 remove the East versus West and have the two highest ranked teams play in the championship game. 
Absolutely. We're all in favor of just yeah. removing divisions and just yeah. keep it one conference, no yep. split divisions. There, there, you, you, I, get to, you, mix up, you mix up the teams every year. Maybe you keep two, maybe three max teams that you play every year for rivalries or whatever reason, but you mix them up every year. Get rid you, of the divisions. Yeah. The, the, Every... the, the East the East is eight and zero since West and East have been created. Yeah. And it's it's obvious that the East is just so much just just like with the SEC. Yeah. The one side is just overly better than the other side. Absolutely. And uh the pod system's been discussed before. Essentially each team gets three protected games. You, know, you you play nine conference games like they're doing now. They're playing nine conference games now. You get three protected teams, and you have a six-team rotation uh, for the other spots. I don't want to. I do not want to play Rutgers in Maryland every year. I don't. I don't want to do it. It does not interest me. Nor, nor does playing Indiana every year interest me. Let's let's play Michigan, Michigan State, and Penn State every year. Or I, I just that was off the top of my head because those are already the divisional phase. If you want to drop Michigan State and add, I don't know Wisconsin, Nebraska, uh, who, whoever you want to add there, we can talk about that. You know, a lot of it might come down to availability for you know who does nebraska consider their three teams and who does yeah. michigan state consider their three teams and it's it is what it is um i i just i don't i don't want to be in the position of playing rutgers in maryland every single year let's let's mix it up a bit and there's no need for divisions i don't know why it's like it's like this understood thing that you need to have divisions. And I, I get maybe why you do it for the nonprofit sports, because it makes traveling easier. I get that. But we don't have to do that on the football side. It's not necessary. Yep. All right. Uh, a few more questions here. Um, actually, the rest of them here from Buckeye Zach. How, how poorly... <laughs> Oh, starting this off great. How poorly do you think um, Ohio State plays against Utah in the Rose Bowl? Will this game's aftermath finally be the key today? Shaving the beard as well as How dare you? the coaching changes he needs. The coaching changes are coming. Like, don't yep. don't get confused about that. Not, Ohio State could beat Utah 45 to nothing. Uh, there are still defensive changes coming. Yeah, defensive coaching so staff changes the beard are as coming. A bad omen. No, why? The 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 beard. The is beard beautiful. looks good on him. The beard looks good on him. Yeah. Uh, y'all, y'all, why, do, why, why do y'all want Ryan Day to change everything about himself when he has lost one Big Ten game? I know that that one Big Ten game was against Michigan, and I know that was the last game they played, which makes it seem a lot worse than it is. But he seriously lost one Big Ten game in three season as the Ohio state head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach also asked, how do we coo Gary Patterson into coming to Columbus <laughs> or Kevin Steele? Uh, a, a big fat GoFundMe campaign <laughs> led by, led by the uh, billionaires of Columbus. Yeah. Uh, how badly will Michigan's showing in the CFP be, when they lose to Georgia, will it be respectable or will they get demolished like Sparty did in, in 15? I think, Ohio, I think Michigan matches up well against Georgia. Yeah, I think, I think so too. Uh, Michigan's defense is good enough to keep, um, to keep Georgia's offense at bay. Yeah. And I think Michigan has enough playmakers to be able to move the ball uh, effectively, not, not, not as well as they did against Iowa, no. But effectively, but effectively to um, make it a close game. I, I think it can be close. I think I saw Georgia's a six and a half or seven and a half point favorite. Yeah, um, I, I do think Georgia, I, I don't know. 
Well, what I think Michigan needs to work on during, you know, you get a month of bowl prep here. What I'd be working on if I was Michigan is trying to get some more tempo because that's one of the things that really aided if you watched if you watched the SEC championship game, one of the things that Bama did to neutralize the defensive front for Georgia was to run tempo. And, you know, a lot of those big defensive linemen that, that Georgia has, they got gassed. So I think that's something Michigan needs to work on is if they want to win this game, adding some more tempo to their offense. Yep. Now, yep. He's a big dude. He's a big dude, Stuart. Yeah. All right, um, will Will Michigan be able to recover from all their turn, turnovers from this year? Harbaugh is Harbaugh more of a four year development coach, and what brand of hot dogs does he feed his players? I don't know what any of this means, except for the hot dogs, and I'm sure it's just whatever's on sale that week. <laughs> um, I think recover from all their turnover from this year. So they got a lot of seniors, a lot of upperclassmen that they're going to. That they're going to lose. I, I think they'll be fine. Obviously, this is this was their year to do it, to to make a splash. But I mean, they got they got some good players. I mean, I mean, I really like their running backs. I really like their their wide receivers. They just got to get a an effective quarterback, like they did I, this year, to a degree. I I, I I I like I like their backup. The backup's young. I like him more than I like McNamara. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think I think they'll definitely be good again next year. Will they be as great as they were this year? We'll see. But I, I think I think they'll be a really good team next year. Yes, McCarthy. Yeah. Um, over under. Again, this is Zach asking us over under interceptions thrown by uh, by Michigan's quarterback in the Orange Bowl. Two and a half interceptions. Under. Yeah, under. I, I don't. Then, Michigan's going to do their damnedest not to throw the ball too often. Yeah. And then the last question from Zach. He wants to know the Buckeyes defensive line pressures, hurries, and sacks in the Rose Bowl. And he sets it at 0.5. Will they get one hurry, pressure, or sack? Of course. Yes. Why, why? Buckeye Zach, I got to ask you this question. Why do you think so highly of Utah? <laughs> I feel yes. like there's a lot of negativity coming from you. Uh, why Why do you think so highly of Utah? Yep. All right, and the last question we saved for Stuart here since he put it in as we were just no. recording here. No, vetoing it. Vetoing it? Vetoing so it. Stuart, he doesn't want me to ask the question. I'm 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 tired of Stuart becoming uh Jim Harbaugh's mouthpiece on this show. <laughs> that's right, right, I said it. All right, that's that's it, Jared. That's all that's all we have here. We're gonna wrap this up as we are recording this Sunday night. The basketball team is about to play here in ten minutes. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and wrap up the show, Jared. Yep. Let's go ahead and do that. I'd like to encourage everyone uh, to join our Discord server. Uh, we'll be talking recruiting and doing all sorts of fun stuff during the entire off season. We are doing social screens. Uh, we're going to social screen. We social screened the Big Ten Championship game last night. We're going to social screen. By the way, if you don't know what I mean by social screen, we're all just going to watch the game together. That's it. We're going to do a bit of a media share and we're going to watch the game together. Uh, the Everyone in the Discord can can watch along. Uh, the paying Patreon members uh, can talk along. They have voice privileges, but everyone can watch along. So you can come join us, uh, discord.sloopcast.com. And um, if you want to help the show financially, uh, we lost a sponsor recently. We could use any sort of the help that anyone could 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 help us out here um, by uh, coming over to patreon.sloopcast.com. Um, again, like we're leaving... We're leaving the Buckeye scoop. We lost a sponsor. So uh, anything you can do to sort of help us out financially, we would appreciate. So uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Well, Stuart wants me to ask a question. Why, why, about... why, why would you do that for Jim Harbaugh? 
Now, I'll actually talk about a different football team, and that is the Ohio State Club football team, winning back-to-back -back national titles um, just, a few, just a few days ago, beating George Mason 42-27. to That's right. Back-to-back -back national titles for the Ohio State Club football team. Uh, we kind of lost you there for a second, Kyle. What would you say after that's right? You, you broke up for a second. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 I can hear you now. All right, I said that Ohio State won their club fo their club football team won back to back national titles over George Mason, forty two to twenty seven. Awesome. And I think that is that is it here. I'm just looking to see if there's any any last minute news, and no, that's it. Let's go ahead and end it end it off here. All right. Um, let's see. I, I forgot, Kyle, I forgot to line up a band. So uh, we're going to we're going to do a quick roulette here. We're going to do a roulette. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let's go with. Let's go with looking, looking, looking. Um, the band Heart Attack Man, the band Heart Attack Man. Uh, that's, uh, they are a band, I believe from the Akron area. Is that correct? Um, Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. Yeah. Cleveland. All right. They're from the Cleveland area. Once again, they're called heart attack, man. So, uh, stick around where you can hear that song. If you're listening to the audio version of this, if you are listening to the YouTube version or watching the YouTube version of this, there'll be a link down in the show notes where you can go listen to the song because we can't play music because YouTube, that's how YouTube is. So uh, go ahead and check that out. And with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Heart Attack Man. Mm -hmm.